Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to part two where I'm going to cover some more about Tub Shabbat. Um, but first of all, I wanted to apologize for my rant at the beginning of part one. Not apologize because I felt led to um, defend fellow brothers and sisters who are on the wall. Um, so... Uh, but I didn't mean to make it sound like a rant. Uh, but it, I, I just felt led to do it because it breaks my heart to see um, our brothers and sisters who are on the wall who were putting out videos and messages on their websites and things to encourage us. And then you have people come and attack them. I just... Uh, it, it, makes me want to start swinging my sword. So, uh, anyway, I'm not going to rant at the beginning of this video. So, I just wanted to um, let you know there's going to be more information in regards to what I'm trying to show you and less ranting. So, with that being said, let's get on with it. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to part two of the Tube Shabbat Song of Songs 144,000 series. Um, I realized that I didn't cover a whole lot of information about Tub Shabbat, and it's uh, mostly because, well, I was trying to keep the video length from being too long, um, and I was going to incorporate like the history of Tub Shabbat and some other interesting um, ties and just incorporate it into showing how it. Uh, relates to what's mentioned in Song of Songs, but I think I'll just go ahead and um, do a little more briefing on the holiday itself, and then when we get into Song of Songs, I can uh, refer back to it. I think that'll help a little better, because there are some interesting things um, having to do with the holiday that I didn't mention in the first video. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I just wanted to add for further encouragement that in the book of Esther, you may recall that Queen Esther entered into the king's house in the 10th month. And we're in the 10th month, at least, I believe, until the 16th of January. <laughs> If the new moon sighting goes according to plan, then the 17th will most likely be the first day of uh, Shabbat. And then two weeks later is the full moon. For those of you who watched the videos that Brother Todd from It Is Finished <clears throat> excuse me uh, put up his warnings regarding 10-4 in reference to the U2 video so you know first we were looking at October 4th and then we're like oh the 10th month which we're still in could be the fourth day of the tenth month. Um, then there was, oh, well, we might be a month behind, um, which is very possible. So in the book of, I believe it's Jubilees. I haven't gone and, and um, tried to find it. It's either Jubilees or, or Jasher, but I believe it's Jubilees. Abba Father says, my children will... Uh, celebrate my feast, I'm paraphrasing, 10 days too soon. And then if you go research about the Gregorian calendar, which replaced the Julian calendar, they added 10 days, just put 10 days out of nowhere, into our current calendar. So we technically are 10 days ahead of the previous calendar 
that I believe Wikipedia said that the Julian calendar was used up until 1923. Um, but I also wanted to point out that January 31st is another 10-4. The 1... For January, so what you might perceive as 104 or 104 could actually be 14, and I think that's where the 14 has been coming in. Um, because the 31st, 3 plus 1 is a 4. Because, like I said, we see through a glass darkly, we don't know for sure what's what. And our father designed his word and the messages that he gives his servants that way on purpose he has to keep it obscure so that the enemy doesn't know for sure either even if they can time travel our father is not going to let the enemy see his plans he, that's what he's done all throughout history um, so, just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, so let's start with the history of Tubi Shabbat, since I didn't cover that in part one. And we'll just read this. This is from Hebrew for Christians, which I highly recommend. It's an excellent website. Um, it's all messianic, uh, Jewish knowledge of all the Jewish holidays and feast days um, with, of course, belief in Yeshua Messiah. So let's read this. The middle of the month of Shabbat is traditionally regarded as the time when spring begins in Israel. The rainy and cold season ends when the blossoms of almond trees first begin to appear. Indeed, some scholars have said that originally Tubi Shabbat was a folk festival to welcome the re-emergence of spring. During the time of the temple, Tuba Shabbat was selected as the date when temple taxes were assessed from Jewish farmers, uh, i.e. Ma'aser. The sages reasoned that by this time, the trees had begun to soak up the winter rains, causing their sap to rise, and therefore Tuba Shabbat marked the start of their growing season. In this way, Tuba Shabbat became known as Rosh Hashanah, Le ile, le I la note. Still learning <laughs> some Hebrew pronunciations. Uh, the new year for trees. And when the temple stood in Jerusalem, Tuba Shabbat served as the day the first fruits of the trees that had turned four years old were offered. Um, now they do list um, references from the Talmud. I stay away from that. That's all written by uh, rabbis and Jewish sages and has nothing to do with what's in, well, I shouldn't say nothing, but it's not scriptural. Let's put it that way. It's man's interpretation. So, anyway, um, so that's a little bit of the history. And let's look at what comes next. The sign of the almond tree. The almond tree has special significance for Tubi Shabbat. The word for almond is Shakha'id, which comes from a root that means to watch or wake, i.e. Shakhad. The almond tree is uh, uh, among the first trees to awaken from its winter sleep. We therefore eat almonds on Tubi Shabbat to celebrate the return of spring. In the scriptures, there is a play on words regarding the use of almond and Yah's watchfulness, i.e. faithfulness. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Yeremiahu, what do you see? Or Jeremiah. And I said, I see an almond branch. Then Yahuwah said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. And that's Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. The blooming branch of an almond tree is breathtakingly beautiful, so much so that, the, that Yahuwah decorated the menorah with oil cups the shape of almond in the shape of almond blossoms. 
and uh, that's described in Exodus where they are building all the vessels for the tabernacle. Indeed, the menorah itself is a symbol of the tree of life, and, and uh, therefore it's also a symbol of uh, Yeshua, who is the tree of life. And therefore it is fitting to regard it during this season. Finally, some have said that Aaron's rod, the staff he used to perform signs and wonders during the Exodus, was made from a branch of an almond tree. Recall that during the incident of Korach's rebellion, Aaron's rod budded, flowered, and produced almonds overnight, which was symbolic of the power of the resurrected priest of Elohim that was coming. That is our King Yeshua. After the second temple was destroyed, the sages of the diaspora continued to celebrate Tu Shabbat by eating various fruits and nuts that were grown in the Promised Land. In synagogue services, it became customary to partake of the seven types of grains and fruits listed in the Torah. Uh, wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. While reciting the prescribed Hebrew blessings, almonds were eaten to recall the bloom of the almond tree. Carob also became associated with Tuba Shabbat because it was commonly eaten while traveling to Jerusalem during the days of the temple, uh, because carob is an ideal traveling food since it does not spoil. The scriptures explicitly state various laws regarding the use of trees. In other words, there is a Torah of trees. For example, when you enter the land and plant any tree for food, you shall regard its fruit as uncircumcised. For three years, in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be holy, an offering of praise to Yahuwah. Um, that has to do with first fruits. So they can't offer it up for uh, a first fruit offering until the fourth year. Only in the fifth year may you use its fruit to increase its yield for you. Um, so in the fifth year, fourth year you can make a, an offering, a first fruits offering. Fifth year you can actually eat the fruit you know, harvest it and sell it, what not. Um, I am Yahweh, your Elohim. The Torah also clearly forbids the destruction of fruit trees during times of warfare. Uh, this rose up in my spirit having, I believe, an association to the 144,000 uh, during the time of harvest. When you besiege a city for a long time, you shall not destroy its trees by wielding an axe against them. You may eat from them, but you shall not cut them down. Are the trees of the field human that they should be besieged by you? Deuteronomy 2019 Clearly, Elohim cares for trees. The psalmist describes the trees of the forest as singing for joy in Psalm 96.12, just as the prophet Isaiah uh, foretold the day when the trees of the field shall clap their hands in praise to Yahweh Elohim of Israel. The ideal righteous man is described as being like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bearing fruit in his season. Psalm 1-3, and of course Isaiah 55 12. It was an old Jewish custom to plant a cedar tree when a boy was born and a pine tree when a girl was born. When two people were married, branches from these trees were used to make poles for their wed wedding canopy, or the chuppah. The custom of planting of a marriage tree at the birth of a child is called netia shel simcha, a joyous planting. On a spiritual level, this pictures being grafted in and made part of the marriage canopy of Yeshua, etc. So I wanted to add this because in Song of Songs, King Solomon actually refers to the house of him and his bride as being made of cedar and fir trees. So um, I believe the cedar stands for the strength. Um, cedar wood is strong. The, the cedar trees in Lebanon are really, really tall and uh, the wood is strong and the fir trees which King Solomon describes as being uh, the rafters in, of the roof uh, has to do with beauty 
and both of the wood, both of the cedar and the fir trees have that very fragrant, beautiful smell to them. So he's picturing, you know, a strong house that is beautiful. Strong because of him, beautiful because of his bride. And, of course, he is beautiful as well. And uh, because he is in us, we are strong. So it's a two-way street. The, the house is beautiful and strong because of him and because of his bride, because they are one. They are echad. The illusion that human life is like the tree of the field, uh, i.e. in Deuteronomy 2019, has led many people to observe Tu as time to assess man's place within creation as well. Since Elohim created the world for a habitation, Isaiah 45:18, some have pictured the world itself as a great tree with human beings as its fruit. Yeshua often used such agricultural images in his parables. For example, he explained that people are known by the fruits of their lives, Matthew 7, 16 through 20. He likened the spread of his message in terms of sowing and reaping, Matthew 13, 3 through 23 and compare the kingdom of heaven to the secret working of a mustard seed in Matthew 13, 31 through 32. Yeshua regarded the world as a field for planting with different types of soil, uh, Matthew 13, 38 through 43, and warned of the great harvest of the souls at the end of the age, Luke 10, 2, Matthew 13, 30. He pointed to signs from a fig tree to indicate the nearness of the prophesied end of days, Matthew 24, 32 to 33. Yeshua also used the metaphor of a vine and its branches to explain how his followers are to be connected to him. John 15, 1-6 During the night of Tub Shabbat, Orthodox Jews read uh, Pri Etz Hadar, literally Fruit of Goodly Trees, a book that contains selections from Torah, Mishnah, Gemara, and Zohar regarding fruit, I'm sorry, regarding trees, fruit, fruitfulness, and so on. King Solomon declared, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. Proverbs 11.30 The one who delights in the Torah and meditates upon it daily is likened to a tree planted by the streams of water that yields fruit in its season. All that he does shall prosper. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 The wisdom of Torah, Chokhmat HaTorah is metaphorically called Etz Chaim, a tree of life. As the Torah service ends at the synagogue, it is customary to sing, It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and whoever grasps grasp it close will be made happy. Proverbs 3.18 Just as the root system of a tree is a source of sustenance for its fruit, so the Torah is the root source of wisdom for the Jew and, of course, for us uh, as believers in Yeshua as well. He is throughout the whole Bible. He, uh, the Torah and all of Tanakh points to him. And our Jewish brothers and sisters just don't see this, most of them for the most part right now, because Abba Father has blinded their eyes to this for a reason. So, a lot of them, it's not even their fault, they can't see it. Uh, but he will restore their, their eyesight, and then they will see. So, fear not. The Bible begins and ends with the tree of life, first in the orchard of Eden, and then in the midst of the paradise of heaven. Um, and also, of course, New Jerusalem. The tree of life... Etz Hachayim was in the midst of the garden. And forgive me, my Jewish brothers and sisters who are believers, or hopefully some are watching that are not yet in Yeshua, Mashiach. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounce any of these Hebrew words. I'm still learning. Uh, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. 
Notice that the 12 fruits from the tree of life are directly linked to the 12 months of the Jewish year, each month rendering its fruit. Uh, I've also heard it stated that the 12 fruits represent the 12 tribes as well. 12 months, 12 fruits, the sequence of the holidays or the Moedim was always intended to teach us great revelation about Elohim. That is why Elohim created the sun and the moon for signs and for appointed times. And that's in Genesis 1.14. As it is also written, he made the moon to mark the appointed times. The sun knows its time for setting. Psalm 104.19. Note further that the majority text of Revelation 22.14 reads, Blessed are those who do his commandments, so that they may have access to the tree of life. Faith and obedience are two sides of the same coin. Okay, so I think that's all I want to cover uh, in regards to Tub Shabbat. Uh, as a recap, it is um, the... New Year for Trees, beginning on Shabbat 15, which is, of course, the 15th day of Shabbat. The first day of Shabbat will be January 17th, the 15th day, New Year for Trees, January 31st. That's the super blue blood moon on Shabbat, uh, for uh, Tub Shabbat, and um, having to do with uh, fruits and fruit trees, and we are the fruit trees. And our fruit is our um, uh, our character having to do with how we resemble our Mashiach uh, and the, the deeds that we do, the works that we do. Um, it, of course, uh, salvation is not based on works, but faith without works is, is dead. So... Uh, it's not a salvation issue. You don't have to do good works, but I mean, it's, you know, it's part of being a follower of Yeshua. Uh, you want to emulate who he was and who he is. And so therefore we should propagate good fruit from our trees, which is why Abba Father prunes the trees. It's to keep them growing and keep them in good shape. The pruning is analogous with tribulation and trials in our life. That's how he prunes the trees so that you'll produce good fruit and keep producing good fruit. And for those who won't produce any good fruit at all and they don't believe those branches will be cast into the fire and burned. So pray for those who don't know Yeshua yet. Um... We all feel that he's coming soon, so we need to keep praying and keep spreading the gospel of peace. And I pray that this study has blessed you. You'll see when we get into Song of Songs in the next video how um, he, he and the bride, when they're conversing and um, speaking of each other, that fruits and nuts and fragrance is mentioned over and over and over. It's almost the majority of the song, it's um, equivalent to their love for each other. It's, you know, the fruits and the fragrance. And so you'll see when we get there. So that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I pray that you all are blessed. I love you all dearly. Please stay strong. Please seek him if you need strength. And... Um, I will see you in the next video. Shalom.